girls. My name is Igor Quippington, and I'm going to teach you all about science equipment in the lab. So, let's get started. The first piece of equipment that we're going to talk about today is this guy. Ooh. This wonderful piece of equipment is called a hot plate. Ow! This is used to heat up beakers, glass beakers, not plastic girls, will have a melty mess, and any other equipment that you'd like to have hot. Once again, this is called a hot plate. Our next piece of equipment, which we're going to talk about, is these little guys. Okay, a lot of people call them squeezers or tweezers, but that's not what they're called in the science lab. They're called forceps. Once again, they're called forceps, and they're used to pick up tiny objects or little things that you cannot pick up with your fingers. These are your forceps. Our next piece of equipment we're going to talk about here is this guy. Many people know what it is. It can come in plastic or glass. This is simply your beaker. And for the most part, it's used to hold liquids, as you see here with these deadly chemicals. Ooh. This is your beaker. Even though there are ways to measure on it, you usually don't use this for measuring. Usually it's just used to store liquids. What you do use for measuring is this thing. This little tubey thing. But we don't call it a tubey thing. No, no, no. We call this a graduated cylinder because it has gradients on it. And it's a cylinder. Therefore, graduated cylinder. And this is what you use to measure liquids. You measure in milliliters. Graduated cylinder. All right, moving right along. Let's get into our dissection stuff, shall we? All right. The first piece of equipment you'll notice has a plastic sleeve on it and then another plastic sleeve on that because it is very, 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 very sharp. This is called a scalpel. It is used for cutting things. In particular, it's used for cutting the animals you're going to be dissecting this year. Like if there's a liver in your way and you really want to see the heart, cut it out. Or you want to cut open the stomach to see what's inside it, you cut with the scalpel. So this is your scalpel and we put it back in its protective case just to be safe. The next piece of dissection equipment we're going to get into are these guys. Okay, they may look like they're used for sewing or something like that, but they are not also very, very sharp and pointy. Can we see them? These are dissection pins. And what you use these for is pinning down your animals when you're dissecting so they don't run away. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're not going anywhere. But you do pin down your animals to make sure you can see all the things you need to see. Like I said, the heart and the guts and all that stuff. So you pin your animal down with these dissection pins. All right, our next piece of equipment dealing with dissection is this fun guy. Okay, this is called a dissection probe. And essentially, it's not very sharp. It's literally just what its name says. It's a probe, so you use it to kind of probe your animal and look for different things. Move things aside. Hey, heart, you're in the way. I'm trying to see the lungs. <laughs> so you move away the heart so you can see the lungs with your probe. Anything you want to move, but you don't want to cut it because it's not very sharp. This is your dissection probe to move things out of the way so you can see them better. All right. And our last piece of equipment here in Lab Equipment 101 is this thing. Oh, you've seen these before. Oh, boy. These are called scissors. I think you've seen them before. And they're dissection scissors. And essentially what they're used for is cutting, just like all scissors are for, but it's when you want to cut something very, very skinny. So for example, when you cut open your frog, or your worm, or your pig, this is what you use to cut open the skin, just like that. And a little tip, when you cut, you want to cut pointed up like this, so you don't cut any of those organs inside there. But again, these are your dissection scissors used for cutting the skin 
of all your animals you're going to be cutting up. I believe that wraps up our dissection equipment. So let's get now onto our chemistry equipment. Okay. This thing right here. Oh, again, some people call it a squeezer or an eyedropper. That's not what it's called here in science class or in a science laboratory. This is called a pipette. Basically the word pipe, et. It's called a pipette. And what you use it for is when you need to transfer liquid. So you squeeze it, squeeze them up. Okay, so when you transfer liquid from one object to another, just a little bit. Okay, this is called a pipette. The next piece of equipment that we're going to be talking about is this. And this is a funnel. And essentially what you're going to use this for is when you need to transfer something like from a beaker into a graduated cylinder. Because if you have the beaker and you try to pour it right in the graduated cylinder, what a mess you could have. My goodness. So what you do is you pour it into the funnel. Look at that. And it goes beautifully right into the graduated cylinder. No mess at all. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for Mr. Funnel. All right. But now sometimes when you get done with your labs in chemistry, you have a nice little mess. Yuck. You need to clean it up. So what you have are these things. And maybe you've seen these at home for scrubbing. But essentially they're just called cleaning brushes. You use the big one if you have a nasty mess. Like if you have frog guts all in your beaker. Mm. Take it and you scrub it out. Ah, oh, beautiful. A nice clean beaker. Thank you, brush. Or what you could do, if the little guy, you wouldn't use that for the beaker, what you'd use it on is this, which is our next piece of equipment, or the test tube. This guy fits perfectly in there. You just twirl it around, and ah, perfect. A clean test tube. So we have our test tube, and we have our cleaning brush. But now, what do we do with all these test tubes? Oh no, I have so many test tubes, I don't know what to do. I have nowhere to hold them. I only have two hands. What do I do? I know. I'll use the next piece of equipment, which is, ta-da, a test tube rack. So this test tube rack can hold two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve test tubes at a time. My goodness, think of all the fun labs we could do with twelve test tubes. So this is a test tube rack. Okay. Sometimes it's plastic, sometimes it's wooden, but either way, it's always to hold your test tube so you can have a fun, safe experiment. All right. Now, this thing, oh boy, oh boy, this is a fancy little thing, isn't it? It's like a beaker, and essentially you use it for the same thing. You hold the liquids, but it kind of has a skinny top on there. Can you see that? Kind of a skinny top. So what this is called is an Erlenmeyer flask. And you're saying, in the what, a what? An Erlenmeyer flask. So make sure you write that down. I don't really care how you spell it. It doesn't matter. It's an Erlenmeyer flask. And again, it's basically just like a beaker with a skinny top. Erlenmeyer flask. Used to hold liquids. All right. And our last thing. Oh, man. This comes in a protective case. And you've all seen this before. Because sometimes things get very hot in science class. And we need to figure out exactly how hot they get. So we use... This guy, which you've all seen before, fancy pantsy, a thermometer. What you should know is that in all science labs, it measures in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. No, no, no. We use Celsius in the science laboratory. So this, again, for measuring temperature, is your thermometer. All right, let's move on. Our next thing that we're going to get to is this thing. This very fancy piece of equipment. I believe you've all seen this before. This is called a microscope. Some things you need to know about it though in the science laboratory is there's three different settings, low, medium, and high. And they're all used to look at objects that are too small for our eyes to see. But what's important to know is you always want to start with the low setting because if it's too big, you might not be able to see it. So start with low, then go to medium, and then if you really, really need to, then you go to the very highest setting. Okay, so this is your microscope. Okay. The next thing 
Oh no, look at this guy, another piece of fancy equipment. Yes, it's fun to play with because you can slide all the beams and it makes fun noises, but that's not what we use it for, boys and girls. No way. We use this piece of equipment to measure the mass of something or how heavy it is. So you can put on a piece of equipment. Oh man, look at this, hand sanitizer, very heavy. So you move things around and eventually you can find out the mass. Some people call this a scale. And I guess you could, but the official name is called a triple beam balance. And as you look at it, there's one, two, three beams. Triple beam balance. So this is the triple beam balance. Very, very, very important piece of equipment here in the science laboratory. All right, we're down to our last two bits here. Okay. Oh man, you're saying, hey, Igor Quippington, I've seen this before. I know what this is, this is easy. I know you do, boys and girls. However, you have your ruler and your meter stick. It's used to measure centimeters, and this will measure a meter. Always eater in the science laboratory. Never inches, and we never say yardstick, because that deals with inches. So say goodbye to your inches. Wave goodbye, boys and girls. No more inches. Always the eaters. The centimeter and the meter and the milliliter. All of these eaters. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Centimeter and meter stick. No inches, no yardstick. No, no, no. Centimeter and meter stick. All right, and the very last piece of equipment that I have here for you is this. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's so comfy. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, man, is that for nap time in, time in science class? I wish. Oh, boy, do I wish we had some nap time. That would be great, wouldn't it, boys and girls? But we don't have nap time in science class. There's too much to do, too much things to learn. This, oh, man, look how big this guy is. It's called a fire blanket. And as you can see, it's huge and it's red and it's always going to be in your science laboratory. And essentially, this is what you're going to roll yourself in if you catch on fire, well, hopefully you have some nice friends who will roll you in the fire blanket. They won't just say, hey, you're on fire, go get the fire blanket. That wouldn't be a good friend. You roll yourself in this, and it'll put out the fire in case you ever catch on fire. But hopefully that never happens here in the science laboratory. So, that's all the equipment I have for you today. What? You're saying there's a couple more things on your flashcards that I didn't talk about? I suppose you're right. I'm sorry about that. So. There are a couple pieces of equipment that I did not go over just because I don't have them in the science laboratory today. So maybe you can fill them in. There is a piece of paper or a little square that has like a little circle paper. And that is called filter paper. Once again, that's called filter paper. And you're smart boys and girls. You know what the word filter means. It basically means that you pour things through it if you want to filter out things. So like you have a solution of chemicals and all these little crystals in it. You want the crystals all by themselves. You'd pour the filter, you know, the the chemicals through the filter paper, and you'd end up with just the crystals that it would catch. So that's what you use the filter paper for. And then there's two more things on your flashcards that I didn't get to. There's these things called hot hands, and you see them. They almost look like they're little rubber things, kind of like gloves, only with no fingers. So no fingers. And what they are used for is to pick up very hot test tubes or beakers, so you don't burn yourself. Those little things, also the little hands, are called hot hands because they're hands that you can hold hot things with. Hot hands. And the very last thing on your flashcards is, how do I even describe it? Well, it's the only thing I have left, hopefully. And what's called this, it's a test tube holder. So in case you ever want to pick up a test tube, you squeeze it and you pick up a test tube. And it's a test tube holder. So you can move it from one to one, again, in case it's hot or you don't want to touch it. Test tube holder. So those are all the science equipment we have for you. I'm hoping you have your flashcards and you wrote them all down and you did a wonderful job with them. So what I'm going to do is say goodbye. And I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me, Igor Quippington. Again, my friends call me Equip for short in this little adventure through the science equipment. And I hope that you are very, very smart and have learned all the science equipment and will use them with lots of safety. So. I'm going to say goodbye to you, but I don't walk away like a normal science person. I'm not a normal science person. What I did is I created this right here, which is wonderful. And this beautiful piece of um, chemical here, I can't share it with you. It's my secret chemical. But what it does is it makes me disappear. So I'm going to drink it and uh, 
say goodbye. And once again, thank you, boys and girls, for uh, learning all about equipment.